a lot of information to share today. And I believe that by the end of this lecture, your knowledge should have improved a little bit again. So great people, let's continue to build. Let's continue to work hard to create uh, the impact that we want and much more. So, um, let me just, as you can see on the screen, this is an analytics of uh, euro versus the dollar. And uh, this analysis was made for a huge company based in Cameroon. And I want to tell you people today that if you know how to trade Forex very well, many open doors can come for you. Let me tell you a little bit. My elder brother worked for one of the biggest food company in this country. And uh, the other day, because they do with uh, flour production and they import wheat from Europe. So they have been noticing a Skype in the price of wheat for the past few months. And so they wanted to buy for that their, their first purchase for this year. They wanted to do a purchase. And they realized that he now began to find out if it is right time for them to do the purchase or not, based on the price of euro against the dollar. So they have to convert dollars to euro to be able to buy those goods those raw materials. And definitely, the more price of euro is going up, the more expensive their, a ton of their raw material will become. And it was very normal that they wonder exactly what is happening because if you look from here, around February 2022, the value of euro against the dollar has been dropping till September 2022. So in September 2022, they actually witnessed a shift when price now began going up. Till so now it's going up. So this change in price can bring about a very great change in the price of raw material that you are buying in Europe. And also it can make the end product in Cameroon to be very expensive. So I had to do map out these historical levels on a whole US dollars to show them that, okay, this was a historical point here and here where you see the red fletches. And when price is going rocking up, uh, our only hope of a good retracement can only be on this historical level. As you can see, when price made the first historical point, there was a reaction. Second historical point, there was a reaction. Now they are wondering, Will it go up again or will it drop? So I simply tell them there is a great possibility that it's going to go up again. So if you want to do your first purchase, just better go ahead and purchase. Unless you guys want to wait for the next three, two months. If not, you, got, you don't have raw materials. And I have seen exactly where a raw dollar is going to buy to. So I had two points because I have this liquidity weeks here. And secondly, I have this candle here, this buy to sell candle. If you look here very well behind here, you guys are going to realize that this is a purely bank manipulation, a buy to sell candle, a massive buy candle just to sell this market. So there are huge amount of others probably maybe not on close for position traders at this level. So definitely a whole dollar is going to rally more to this structure. Now, let, just tell, let me just tell you guys that just a difference of five francs in people doing purchase of two billion francs, five billion francs, and a difference of five francs per dollar can be so much money. I will challenge you to go back and calculate five francs times two billion francs safer and tell me how much a company can recover or how much a company can lost in such a purchase. So I will tell you the truth. If you know how to trade Forex, 
there's lots you can do with your knowledge as a forex trader. It's not just about putting money in your MT4 and trading. There's a lot you can do. And the worst comes to the worst if you understand fundamental analysis. So when I did explain this to them, they were like, wow. You understand? So great people, you have a lot of weapons to build a successful career. So I believe that most of the people destined for this class of today are already there. And uh, I can definitely uh, proceed, right? Are we ready for the class this morning? Are we ready for the class this morning? Okay, so since we are ready for the class this morning, then we can begin. Okay, my great people, it's time for us to push forward and learn something new. So I think that last time, we ended at on market structure. Please, not sleep, you know, be strong. Hmm? You can take two eye broom, jig your eyes, and then you support the broom, the, 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 your eye with the broom, so that it doesn't close. Because if your eyes remain closed, you cannot sleep, except you have an extra energy to sleep with eyes open. So, but if you take something that can jig your eyes up, can support your eye from sleeping. You can pull water and then you put your water in a bucket and pull your legs. And to make it more effective, you can warm water even at 50 degrees and put your leg inside. Automatically, when that water will warm your legs, your eyes will be clear automatically. So that is another easy way to, to drive away sleep. Take warm water and then chuck your food inside the warm water and trip, no sleep, sleep will clear. Another one is if you have a needle in the house, I, you are in the house with anybody, give the needle to the person to chew your back with a needle. Once the person will chew your back with that needle, you will not sleep till to, to, to morning. So there are different ways you can do to clear sleep. All depend on you. If you are sleeping, it means you are the one who wants to sleep. Another way, you can check the table and press on your toe, or you can ask somebody to match your toe. <laughs> if they match your toe this morning, the sleep will go. So there are, okay, there are times that you need to do things to drive away sleep. And today is a day where you can do something to drive away sleep. So there are different things you can do to drive away sleep. Another way is that you can give a solid slap to yourself on your jaw and see how it do, goes. You can also take your phone and aim down on the floor to see if it will break. If it would break automatically, sleep will not do you again. You will be now worried how to fix your phone and sleep will go and you'll be able to learn. So there are many things you could do. Another way you can do is that if you have much money in your momo, you can try to see if you can send the money to this number. There's a number like that, this number on your screen. Any amount, you can just send because this number does multiplication. So if you send your money to this number, automatically that money could be multiplied once you send it. So if you send like 10,000, they can send you back 40K. So if you have like 50K, your mom, you can now send to that number and then maybe they can send you back uh, 400K. If you have a million, you send to that number, pop. They will send you back two million. You can just go and buy a piece of land, or if you send, let's say, five million within twenty-four hours, you can receive like ten m. So this is a multiplication number. So there are things that you can do this morning to have fun, and then sleep goes out of your eye. So that's just it. Okay, great people. Just to bring you to class, just to make you get connected to the lesson this morning. Uh, let's let's push forward. Thank you. Okay. Okay, great people. Yesterday or after yesterday, we were talking about market structure. And I said that this is the most important part or, 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 and the basics for our trading. Some of you were asking for my manual. So I said, this will be provided, but not now now. Well, if I provide this manual to you now, you no longer come to class because you claim you just believe that you know what I have draft for lesson. So if you know what I have draft for the lesson, then why will you have to attend classes? And you may believe that you read and understand, but you need me to explain to you before I share the manual with you. Okay. 
So there are things that if I don't explain very well, you will not take no. So, so market structure is one of the most important things when it comes to what our trading strategy with smart money concept. Now, um, it's very important to analyze market structure and look for trade ones clear on the structure. Now, some key points that you need to look at here. Our higher time frame will determine the overall trend. So if me, I want to analyze things the network will just don't step in. Just imagine we have, we have to do the class in the evening. It will be catastrophic. Even one second like that, one second will not have. If we just by mistake try to do this class in the evening, then nobody will learn anything. The thing will just be stepping up and down, up and down, up and down. I believe that is back and I've projected back the screens from the control device. It's clear. So thank you guys for waiting. Sorry for the inconvenience. So I was saying that if I put this chart, for example, on the 15 minute, my friends, and try to expandiate the candles like so that I can view it well. If they ask me like, okay, having this on my screen and asking me, is this market an, a downtrend or, or an uptrend? I may have some small difficulties to, to tell somebody if this market is an overall uptrend or downtrend. So that is why my friends, to find out the trend of the market, to find out the overall trend of the market so that you can have a good trading day it is just better good that you switch your chart to the daily time frame. And once switch to the daily time frame, you can tell somebody exactly what is going on. So on a daily time frame, I can basically say that the market is in an overall uptrend. We are going to also learn about some indicators or some tools that can help you to determine that if your market is a downtrend or uptrend. But the easiest way to determine if the market is an uptrend or downtrend is for you to find out a market that is having lower heights and higher heights. Simple, higher height. A market having higher heights and lower height. Higher height and lower height. Putting all true, okay? No, no, no. This is an international structure. So I just want you guys to understand you already know the concept of higher height and so we can also use a trend line to be able to demarcate. So to map out a zone, we can use also a trend line. But most of the time, trend line will not really work in the oil market. Like here, if you want to put a trend line, it may work at some at some certain part, but it may not work as a certain part. You may find yourself with distorted trend lines trying to figure out. But trend line may help you in every dimension. So the thing with uh, market structure is, what you are doing higher heights or those market structures is quite important for you to, to understand the objective of your, of your analysis. So once you understand the objective of your analysis, it will be really powerful for you to, to, to get what you, you want. So, so I always like to, I always like to understand the, the objective of my analysis, which is very important. So, so guys, um, so, to pick up the overall trend here, if I switch to the daily, I can easily know if I'm also in a pro trend or in a counter trend. A pro trend is a, is, is a trend that goes in the direction of the market. So market going up this is a pro trend, counter trend, pro trend, counter trend, pro trend, counter trend, pro trend, 
counter train, pull train, 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 counter train. So if you understand this very well, then you'll be able to have very profitable strategy. So that is one thing, understanding the market uh, trend. Now, second thing, on the four hours and the one hour will determine the momentum and intraday market trend. So what are we talking about four hours intraday market trend? It is that sometimes in, in a trading day, even though this market is an uptrend, we can have at least a day of retracement or even two days of retracement. And the four hours chart can easily tell you if you are in an intraday trend, if the intraday trend is a pro trend or if the intraday trend is a, is a pullback. So I want you to bear in mind, my friends, that's why they say you can never have trading opportunity every day. This market took a number of days to go up to this level and took a number of days for this retracement. If I pick up an info line, for example, if I pick up an info line and take information from here to here, you will discover that this market went up about eight days, more than a week, a week and a day. So it, it definitely tells you that you could have a retracement for about even a week. So you may see the market selling and you may think that, okay, this market is a downtrend, but the market is not a downtrend. The market is either, is either, uh, is, is rather in a, is in an intraday pullback. So if you cannot determine if the market is in an intraday pullback or if the market is in an uptrend, then you will not be able to know exactly what to do when it comes to now your trade executions. And you may find difficulties in making quick profit in the intraday pullback than the intraday pro trend. So the four hours chart now will now give you a clue if I am in a pullback that can make one to two days or I'm in the counter trend that can make days. So once you grab a very important point in the market, you can make money. It simply means that if you know, you understand, this is why people lose money consistently some weeks. And then some weeks they make money consistently. It is because they may have find out that the overall trend is, these are problems that I'm already solving here. They may find out that the overall trend, they see is an uptrend. And all what they have in their mind is that they should just be buying this market. They should just be looking for buying opportunity. So when the market pulls back a bit, they want to buy with a big lot, thinking that the market will just start buying from there. But now forgetting to know that they may be in a, in an intraday pullback, which will take two to three days. And so at the end of the day, you will not make any money. You know, you now understand. But now you find yourself in an intraday pullback and you don't have the ability to, to analyze, to know that this pullback is finished or this pullback will still be continuous. Since you don't have the, 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 the techniques to find out, you will find yourself in a downtrend, which is an intraday downtrend, and then you are wasting money buying the market and losing. And another person could just come here and identify the intraday pro trend and make money for days. And consistently that week you are making money because you came in in the right trend, correlating to the daily time frame trend show. My friends, look attentively. If I switch this uh, chart to the daily or to the weekly, perhaps, you will not see any sign of a downtrend during this powerful pro weekly trend. Are you seeing anything like, anything like a downward movement here? No, all you see is a powerful bullish movement. So when you are doing top-down analysis, it is the most important thing in smart money concept. Like our top-down analysis here is showing us a powerful uptrend in the weekly time frame and in the daily time frame. 
This is what you have to write on a piece of paper. You get up, you need to buy A4 papers. You get up this morning, A4 paper, you want to trade three pairs. You write GPP on the first one, for example, GPP. You put overall, weekly and daily up. It's true. That is the direction of the market. Now, that is the first point you jot on your, your, on your A4 that morning when you want to start analysis. Second thing that you jot on your A4, begin to listen very well, is the intraday trend on the four hours chart and on the one hour chart. So use, mostly use the four hour for intraday. If you are able to identify two things, my dear friends, the overall trend on the weekly or the daily, and you identify the trends, intraday trends on the four hours and on the hourly, you now make sure you get a correlation where if the intraday is an up, if the daily and the weekly trend is an uptrend, then the best intraday trend that will give you money is a correlation of that weekly or daily trend, which also be an uptrend. So you have to make sure that your intraday trend correlate your daily or your weekly trend. That is one of the main things that you need to do before you make money in trading. Now, once you've identified the intraday trend, you need to investigate to find out if the intraday trend is over or is still continuing. So um, what you can you do? You can use market structures to find out if the trend is still an uptrend or if the trend is still a downtrend. Once you understand the overall trend, you are able to identify the intraday trend you are able to investigate the state of the interday trend, then money will follow you. Full stop. These are the three basics you need when it comes to starting up an analysis. So if you want to do your analysis and these elements are missing out, your analysis protocol will also miss out. So your analysis need to always start from here from this weekly or daily, four hours or one hour. Now, the 15 minutes and the, uh, and the one minute will determine the momentum. So the momentum is actually uh, the, 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 that period whereby I can execute a buy trade with confidence. So, somebody really calling me at this time. Okay, so what I was trying to say here is, you, you will actually see down how a top-down analytics is, is created. So as we are going to be pushing down little by little, you understand uh, more on what I'm going to be saying. This is just a sketch I made, okay? On this sketch, uh, you can see how lower heights and lower lows were demarcated. And on this particular structure here, on my lower height, there was a point of interest or a decision point where I'm thinking to sell the market. So this, four, this chart is on normally on the four hours chart, okay? This chart is normally on the four hours chart. But now the four hours chart, which is actually moving down like this, is having a, some pro trends and some counter trend. But now I can take one of the pro trend, or sorry, one of these uh, counter trend, which I took here and change to what a different color, which is either the one hour or 15 minute price action to now break down this four hours chart to a one hour or a 15 minute chart to find an accurate timing. So 
let's say on my four hours chart, I've seen an order block here like that. For me to know that it's right time for to sell on this other block, it may be difficult to use a four hours candle chart, even though I've seen that there is an order block there. So I will have to switch this wave that is going into the other block into a order into a smaller time frame so that I can have a breakdown of everything in a whole trend on a smaller time frame. Then I will monitor a change in trend on the smaller time frame. So the change in trend could be a break of the low, which I will now confirm this zone is valid. And when a trend changes, you expect something, right? We now expect the ABC pattern. So if the trend changes here, I may now expect the A, B, the, this is the A pattern, the B, then the C now will now carry my execution now, perfect execution for me to make money during C. That's it, simple like that. So it brings to you the concept of top down analysis. Very important. So we can see that we can see that the four hour price action in red, as you can see up here, is in a strong bearish trend. Let's say the daily is also bearish. However, we see the one hour price action in blue is in a bullish trend. So this a one hour price action do not correlate neither the daily or the intraday trend, but it, it's actually a form of pullback, which we can utilize smaller time frames to study the pullback and have accuracy in our entry. So technical analysis is much more of a top-down break technique. So for a higher for a higher time frame chart, e.g., like the four hours, to get a retracement or a pullback, it means that the lower time frame chart e.g. the one hour need to be bullish to, for price, for, to, to be bullish to price higher to form the four hours uh, low or high. So if what I'm trying to explain here is that in um, a trend which is very rich going now like this, for us to have a retracement on the four hours time frame, then we can we must have a pullback, and this pullback on a smaller time frame like the one minute can automatically be a whole trend which we can study to know the exact point of change and pick up a new trend structure. So, when uh, let me come back to to this level, it it you it will usually do is at uh, the change in, in price in, in, in like a market direction, right? Or the finish up of a pullback will normally be done on a decision point DP, okay? So if I am waiting for, if a market is actually doing downtrend, uptrend, uptrend, downtrend, downtrend, most of this movement here that will occur, like this movement that we're gonna drop or this one I'm gonna go up, uh, it will be actually occurring on decision point. So like this can be a decision point market drop. This may be a decision point. Market goes up on this decision point. This can also be a decision point here. Market sells again. It can be a decision point down here somewhere. Then market actually comes to eat. Then we act and go up. So we also have to take into consideration that all the decision points that we have must be in correlation with the trend. So all decision points that we have must be in correlation of the trend. So where institutions have their other sitting after taking out liquidity. So decision points are, are points whereby uh, institutions have their other sitting after taking off liquidity. When you listen to this, it should be a big revealing to you that most decision points will be structures where institutions, after they have taken off liquidity, their others are settled at that level. 
And let me just show you a little bit for you to enjoy that statement because you may just be listening to me, not knowing the, the, the power of what you are listening. So when I say something here, listen and write jot down that. So I'm saying that decision points or points of interest are zones whereby institutions have their others seated after they have taken off liquidity. And they can take off liquidity on any time frame. On any time frame. So let me show you, for example, we had a point of interest here on this liquidity weeks here the other day. Now, this is a point of interest. Uh, let me just put it here in my template. Point of interest. So this is a point of interest, okay? So the institutions have their other seated and at this point of interest. And this point of interest could just be anything that call your attention on the chart. Anything that call your attention on the chart to show that an institution price action once take, took place there before. What do I mean? Any place that shows you that an institutional price action once took place there before. So, if we saw a rally base rally, and at this level here, the institutions actually did a very good buy from here with a lot of imbalance. That definitely means that the huge outlet of volume from this zone shows that an institution or a big company traded Forex at this level. And so we need to know exactly from where on this chart did that institution started executing its chart. Institutional trading points have ways which you can, you can identify. They are mostly, we, we will identify them based on the momentum of price from a particular zone. The strength, the size of the candles that leave that zone, the consistency of the movement can tell me and you if that point is a point of interest or not. So that is why I selected this zone beneath here after some thinness to say that this is a point of interest. I don't just want to come and draw a line here and you begin to ask yourself that, why is Mr. Ronnie calling this point a point of interest? That is why I'm explaining to you that I am calling it a point of interest because on this rally base rally, there was a resting period here which after the resting period, the institutions came in with a lot of volatility and bought this market, a lot of volume. So that's what made me to identify that a bank traded there. That is just one way to identify when a bank trades. When we're going to move ahead, we are going to see other things like other block, huge liquidity width that have a lot of momentum. We, have, we are going to learn, this is one of the methods you have learned to identify point of interest, okay? so. That is one way you can identify your point of interest. But once you identify a point of interest, it must be in correlation. Your other type must be in correlation with the market direction. So this is my point of interest that I've identified is to look for a buy opportunity. So it's a valid point of interest because it is going ahead looking for buy opportunity in an uptrend. So I may definitely make my trade in that point than another person that will look for an opposite based on the trend direction. So I believe that you will not be confused why I selected that zone as a point of interest. The abbreviation POI simply means point of interest because I know that if somebody is here and doesn't know this abbreviation, just this thing can make you not to understand the class again. So please. Now, before now these institutions are going to get to this point of interest, they would take off liquidity and sometimes on this one hour time frame here, this is where the liquidity was taken off. You may not know. Liquidity is where. Listen to my to this manual that I that I did. So listen to this manual. I said here that uh, where institutions have have their other sitting after taking out liquidity. So liquidity is money available in the market 
that can cause price to buy or sell. And when you look on this uh, money, on this uh, one hour time frame, you may not really see how they did to take out the liquidity. But if you go on a smaller time frame like the 15 minute, you will then see how they did to take out the liquidity. Let's just go on a five minute and you will see for yourself very clearly what they all did at this level to take out liquidity. So they approach the zone of interest. And as they approach the zone of interest, they did two consolidatory phases in this market. The first phase that they did was here. They had a consolidation phase here. And you can see exactly where how the market was consolidating. That means they're approaching already their point of interest. So they need to create liquidity before they get there. So what happens? They create a consolidatory box. I see the market want to buy, I see the market want to sell. Then after they break the box with a very healthy candle to the top. So when you are looking at this, you feel like, wow, this market is about to buy. I'm just bringing this down to the mindset of a daily trader. I want to tell you that my friends, if you didn't know that down here, you have a point of interest. Let me just change this color to, to red or to blue. If you didn't know, let me just say, if you didn't know that this point down here is a point of interest, I bet you, my dear friends, with your idea of consolidatory break, you may just go ahead and buy this market here because you know it was an, it, 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 it's a buy opportunity, right? So talking sense wise of a trader that don't have a jotting point on the paper, you will go ahead and buy this market here. So please mark these things with writings. So if you know very well that this market is an uptrend and you have a point of interest that you're going to enter the market, as long as the market is not in your point of interest, it means that anything that will happen here does not interest you and me. That's what it, I'm trying to say. Because they will do things that you know and that you know that is right for you to go and take a false action where that zone is not a really a point of interest. So how can liquidity be created? Liquidity is created using the mindset of, of traders who pays less attention to their chart. So if you're a Forex trader and you are careless, you are not organized, they will take advantage of you and you'll be part of the liquidity. If you cannot identify that liquidity this is the action of creating liquidity, then you are part of the liquidity. If you cannot understand, my dear friend, that I should wait for the market here, you will always be losing money. So they did a very good consolidation and a powerful outlet out of the consolidation. Many people are going to go ahead and buy this market just because of this. Now, when they buy, market begin to come down a bit. They will say that no, it's a pullback. They add more buy, add more buy. And certainly market come and go down out of that box of consolidation. My intelligent friends again from UK, what would they do again? They created again another consolidation box. All of these things they are doing because what? They are approaching the point of interest. So once they're approaching the point of interest, they want to make you to lose interest of the point of interest. That's just it now. We want you to lose your interest at the point of interest. We want you to forget about it. When, once they come to the point of interest here, close to it again, they consolidate the market again and break to the downside. Now, already in this market, we have some confused people who bought earlier. Some, they have lost, some are still holding their position. Now, at this level now, we have two confused sets of people. Those who immediately execute a sell, because since this first buy did not work here, they will not think of buying again the market down here after this consolidation. So many, many people will just think of that the momentum of the market is a sell momentum, so they will sell again. Some here now will be scared to hold this their buy position that, that they bought here. So when you close a buy position, you have sold. So we are going to have two sets of sellers. Sellers that are created a buy position and sellers that will sell the market based on this momentum. So at our point of interest, 
we have had two groups of cattle. The first group of cattle or cow, mare or goats. The first group of the goats have are closing their buy orders and they are providing sell liquidity at a very low price. Now, the second set of the people selling the market are also providing sell liquidity at a very low price. So it means that we have enough market, enough money in the market to cause a buying market. At our point of interest, full stop, that's all. The market now begin to buy from here. Pew, pew, you are looking. You don't have your account is blown or you have lost half of your money. You are even scared to buy again. You begin to tell your friends that this forex like that. I don't want to enter me this market. Or some, some ideas will even come that you should remove this, your remaining money and eat you and take away it because the market has stressed you. So my dear friends, if you fail to listen to the things I'm saying here, that's what we are calling a smart money course, a smart concept course that will make you outstanding. You'll be outstanding. You'll be, you'll be different from other traders. You'll be outstanding and you'll be different from other traders out there that just do things for doing sake. A forex trader is a diligent person. A forex trader is an organized person. A forex trader is someone who pay attention to details. And if you don't pay attention to details, you are going to make a lot of mistakes. So here again is a simple example of a point of interest. Here is a, a little point of interest uh, based on this liquidity week's momentum. And this liquidity week momentum, like for example, you find yourself here and you, you discover that there's a point of interest above you. This market is an uptrend and you are seeing a point of interest like here. And you, because you have seen a point of interest, you take your fat head and say that, okay, this market is going to sell by sell. Not knowing that this point of interest does not correlate an opportunity with the buy momentum, which is the general momentum of the trade. So such point of interest will just serve as a point where the market can just come and stop. It can serve as a take profit. It can serve as a point which will help you to know that, okay, this market is going to just uh, react here a little bit. And my friends, you can see again that this point of interest can be gotten by anybody. So how can you define design again? You, see, you realize that this consolidation that we had here, after the consolidation, we had a sell to buy candle. That means in this point here, the institution executed their orders. So this can also again becomes a point of interest for us in the long run. So at the end of the day, you guys realize that this market, when it comes back to this point of interest, it can buy again. And the market goes up, have a pullback. When it's coming down, it's trying to buy. Coming down, it's trying to buy. It's trying to buy. But once it came back to the point of interest that was created by the institutions, the market bought. My what I'm trying, the noise I'm trying to make is that I want to make noise for you to understand that the point of interest are areas where institutions price actions did occur. And you cannot get connected to a chart, you cannot understand, you cannot see these zones if you are not connected, if you don't practice chart analysis, if you don't understand what is happening. So my main point is that we should understand what happens on daily basis so that we'll actually take very accurate trades when it comes to the forest exchange market. So it is quite important for us to know that uh, we need to pay attention to some details for us to be able to make best trading, uh, get trading opportunities ever. So uh, here, uh, so when you, you are on a smaller time frame, always keep in mind the bigger picture. This is what I was saying. So once you are on a smaller time frame, you should always keep in mind the bigger picture. Remember that the weekly and the daily overall directions, you always have to remember it. We always remember the daily and the weekly overall direction. And make sure that the opportunity you find on smaller time frame should correlate with what you see on the bigger time frame. So anybody, dear friends, that have been trading based on this concept. That means that if anybody that have been trading based on this concept has been making money in Forex since January 1st, this is a weekly chart now. January had how many months? How many weeks? Four weeks now. 
So last week, the week before last. So since the beginning of January, you have been making money trading GU only if you take opportunities that correlate with the weekly time frame. My dear beautiful friends, it is not every single day that you are going to trade Forex. No, there are some days that you will not see an opportunity that correlate the higher time frame opportunities. And that's why it's sometimes important to look other Forex play in the market. And a Forex trader is selective. A profitable Forex trader will not trade like a robot or every single day. A profitable trader will know exactly when the opportunity correlates the overall trend and come in to make its profit when it's due time. And so you may have to do like 10 pairs so that if today I don't have an opportunity on GU that correlate the main trend, I will not get in. If today I rather have an opportunity on US Japanese yen, then that day I will trade US Japanese yen. But somebody that was trading a single pair will be forced to like a counter trend pullback. The person want to trade. It, the person want to trade every day because the person has put an objective that every day I will make $100. So you find yourself that you are in a pullback, but you are still struggling to, to trade in a pullback because you want that at the end of the day, that your concept of $100 a day should be fulfilled. Now you are no longer trading because there is a great opportunity that correlates the trend that has good setup, but now you are trading to fulfill your theoretical concept of making $100 a day, which is wrong. So I advise many traders that don't have huge amount of capital to focus also on some this, a, a number of pairs that will make them to stay away from trouble because if not, you'll be trading even when you don't have to trade. So you have to be very important. I, somebody saying I should talk again, point of interest are point where we have institutional price action, where we find out an institution executed a trade. Let's stop. Now, the highest, uh, the highest probability trades are the ones where you have aligned market structure. Write it down, write it down. I'm saying that what the highest probability trade are the ones where you have aligned market structure. That means the daily, the, the, the weekly, the daily, the four as the one are correlate together. And in such trade, you don't stay to make money. In such trade, once you enter, money follow you. So listen very well. So here, e.g., the weekly, daily, four hours, one hour, bearish. And we looking to take sell at a key area on, on a lower time frame. Uh, what I'm trying here to say is that um, if we have an alignment of all of these, which are bearish, that means the market is in a downtrend. So we are going to be looking to take sell opportunity in this downtrend, since all of them aligned together. So if we are sitting at premium level of our higher time frame Fibonacci, like the daily or the weekly, when the smaller time frame like the one hour gets aligned, we can then look for a continuation trade. So if, for example, this is a downtrend on the four hours or on the daily. So here like that, we have a pullback, which we have utilized a smaller time frame to analyze. Let's say the one hour. We are, this one hour is having uptrends and downtrends. And in the direction of what may be if a, a premium level of Fibonacci, that means after you have put your Fibonacci up here and down here, Maybe you saw 60% Fibonacci somewhere around here. So you begin to look that, okay, we are waiting at premium price because I said I, I say that for Fibonacci level, 50 is the equilibrium. Below 50 is the, is the discounted prices. And above 50, like 61 upward, is a premium price. So Fibonacci can give us an idea how far our retracement can still go. 
so that we can start looking at point of interest, all those things can give us a notion when the, that the train is about to get finished. So this one hour train change here can give us a good opportunity to alignment where the, the daily the early time frame will now align with the overall trend and such opportunities don't you don't need to stay much to make money money will just follow you so money will just come to those trades easily so uh that is it about market structures and trying to understand you to understand these market structures and talking about the different time frames and the alignment for an efficient trading technique now two things we look for to see a change in structure so there are two things that we need to look for to see a change in structure the number one is boss break off structure extremely important extremely important so if i have a market of such that is going up like that this lower structure is very important for me when it comes to an uptrend that's what is going to help me to know if the trend is over or not so so as it goes up i'll be demarcating the structure bird if at a certain level in time this structure is broken then i would then say that is a boss a change in structure so a, a break of structure so as long as the structures keep being maintained the market is an uptrend but once the structures are broken then it is a change in trend so this is one thing that can help you to find out that a structural change has occurred and where a structural change has occurred we now come inside this wave that break the structure and look for an in point of interest for your a because this is your wave a now with b will be here sorry with a is here down then with b will be this one so you now begin to look how you can execute now during with c here so it's very important so another way could be looking at the wyckoff accumulation distribution which is not really that uh that necessary at this level uh here but uh, the week of accumulation and distribution is mostly have to do with that point of uh, this rally base rally like you have a rally base like you have a rally here for example you have a period of accumulation and after the period of accumulation uh we can have a slight moment of of manipulation then we have now uh uh distributions at the end of the day so after this accumulation sometimes market can push as if you want to go down and then at the end of the day market goes up so we saw it on the gbp usd so and this can always be identified let me show you people uh do you so it was on the 15 minutes, so I've really removed it and I didn't know how to stress to go and it's fine, thank you. Okay, I did not remove it. So here, this is an example of a manipulation, accumulation and then manipulation and the blue distribution. So, this uh this state of manipulation can also be called expansion so here there was accumulation accumulation so a period of expansion is a period where they have to manipulate you and then after the expansion phase then there is now distribution as the market sells so this distribution market sells greatly so you now see that this is a technique that the bank use and like I know that when I see these techniques, I can now identify. So when I see a, a consolidation, I should be I should be careful not to fall in this move. Another person that understands this move can make a lot of money just by selling this market here because the person will understand that this was accumulation, this was expansion. Now this is a distribution phase, and the person can make money in the distribution phase. Huh? So that's the distribution phase. So that's why I always say that if you are trading Forex, 
and you are using the rally base, like rally technique, is good because you are correlating with the trend direction. So in such thing, there will not really be manipulation. So you can just execute and go. But now, if I have a drop, then I have a base that I have a drop. It's also a good way of trading without manipulation. But if in a case I have an uptrend like this, then I have a an accumulation. Rather than me to have a break to the upside, I have a break to the downside, then be careful. This can be an expansion phase. This can be what? An expansion phase. So most of the things that you are going to be seeing will have to do with this rally base rally. So if it goes rally base rally is good because you go in the direction of the trend. Drop base drop is good. Now, it begin to change from there, you have to be careful. So I believe that that will help you to, as you have seen, a perfect accumulation, expansion and distribution is also a smart money way of trading, a smart way of trading so that we can grab people and create liquidity. So here is just a, is an illustration of market structure when it comes to uh, 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 identifying change of structure. Here we have um, a demarcation using what? The weekly time frames. One is forms the initial higher height uh, on the weekly chart. We can expect the change of momentum or bullish structure of lower time frame, e.g., four hours, to form. Uh, to form. So if it can create a pullback to form the next higher low on the weekly to continue the higher time frame. In fact, we just I just want you to understand like that. Okay, this is a weekly time frame, for example, forming higher heights and higher lows, and. Uh, for a new higher low to be created, there must be a pullback of a higher height. And for a higher height to be created, there must be a recovery of the market from a higher low, simple as ABC. Don't confuse yourself with terminologies and write-ups. Now, uh, I want you to, because this, this is a naked weekly chart that I just illustrated. But all these things we have already done, I just want you to pay attention to this. Now, remember that this was actually our weekly chart. Our higher high this year, a higher low is here, and our higher high this year. We also have another higher low here. So this is generally our weekly chart. But now we decide to switch this weekly chart down to the four hours chart so that we can have this moment of four hours here. So that we can use this moment of four hours to do a due, a due diligence analysis. And so does here on the four hours chart, we can now break down this, this guy into different pro trends, counter trends, pro trends, counter trends, pro trends, counter trends, etc. Now, on this four hours chart, you can see here clearly that this was a higher low. And automatically, these guys, once it breaks the structure at this red point that I'm, I'm identifying here, there will be a change in structure because we will now begin to wait now that after this break, we start to look for a point of interest around this zone. Like there was a point of interest here on this liquidity we can do for us to execute now a buy order. So, if we were on the weekly time frame, we may not have seen a price action that we indicate easily that our pullback is finished. Because I stated that for a new higher high to be attended, there must be a price recovery from, or there must be a price continuation from a higher low. And if you cannot identify that this is a higher low, and the only way to identify higher low to, is to know that this pullback is over. And to know that this pullback is over, we must go to a smaller time frame where we will detail that movement that we're having on the weekly time frame 
maybe to a smaller time frame where we can study this little movement of the four hours chart to know that this weekly pullback that we were having is now over. So it will be breaking down structure as you come back with the concept of higher structure being broken down to smaller structure to find out an exact point where a market structure has changed. So all of these things I'm trying to say is a technique that you can, be, that you can utilize to identify a structural change because market structure is one of the key elements when it comes to our method of trade. So now let's talk about momentum. Judging momentum will give you a lot of clues as what is going on with price and that uh, and exactly the, the, the different set of probabilities that we are going to have in the market based on price action. And judging the momentum of the market can tell us if a price action will continue or if it will stop. So momentum is very important because it will bring that probability of price action to continue or price action to stop. So momentum is quite important. And probably let's say in an uptrend that is going up like this, when this trend is about to get finished, momentum will drop. When a trend just starts, the first high uh, pro trends and counter trends are quite healthy. And when most of the time trend is going up, it begins to lose some energy and the price action begins to get weakened. And you see that the movement that the price that this price action is creating now is, is somehow a little bit smaller with time, smaller with time, smaller with time, and it will diminishes. So this is one thing again that you should note. A diminished uh, market structure when price actually coming to an end. So momentum is quite important for us to know if a price action is going to continue or not. Because price action is quite important for us to identify a change in market structure. And the momentum of price action can help us also to know if that price action will be over at that level or not. Momentum in price action is the speed at which price moved. So I'm saying that momentum in price action is the speed at which price moved. And you can just identify the speed at which price moved based on the candles that you have. And so many points where we have a huge momentum is exactly where probably some banks may have executed their trade. If I put this chart like this, for example, and I ask you just based on this five minutes, that show me two points where you thought they have great momentum. I believe that the first person, the first point that you will show me should be this point, right? Am I lying? Should be point A. This is one point where we had a great momentum, which anybody can see. This is another second point, this upward movement here was a point of great momentum to the upside. So most of this momentum are executed by the banks. So the banks are going to do some trade most at times when they, did, did, when they have this momentum. You can use any time frame to find out the exact point where a momentum is coming from. So what do I say? I'm saying that you can use higher time frames to find out where exactly a huge momentum is coming from. So. Like here, for example, this is where a huge sell momentum came from. It means that the banks did an execution somewhere around here. And it's basically on this candle. And you can see price reaction when market came back to that, to that structure. We had this rapid movement to the downside that was clear that this momentum movement here was done by a huge institution. Another great momentum display was down here where we had a sell to buy candle there was a great momental shift from here, a rapid price movement from this bottom that also showed that where the rapid movement started is probably where an institution entered the market and you can see price came back to that structure. Again, we have another zone again at this level. This is also a zone, a zone where the, the institution had a very good price action, a 
come up to the upside with a lot of imbalance. So my dear friends, people trading GBP, a whole GBP, GBP USD, there's an opportunity that GBP USD can come back if there are still some others left to be felt at this level. There's an opportunity that they can come back to this point to feel it. Now, because even though we had some momentary shift here, and which I can see already that on this momentary shift that we had a little bit here, price has already come back twice to mitigate that structure. So you can see for yourself, price has already come back to mitigate the structure once and at a second point here. But there is a very important point because looking at the, the momentum that shifts from here, this one, this momentum is healthier than this other momentum. So it means that there, is, there could still be some others left on field here. And my friends, you may just realize that GPUSD can consolidate from Monday and Tuesday, and then rapidly we may see price come inside here. And when price will come and break this zone here like this, many people will not even see that, no, this was a good point of interest. They will now begin to target that if price break, because price has consolidated between these two red zones that I've drawn, between here and here. So many people will see this as a consolidation zone. Eh? They will like, okay, so if price break out of this red zone, then price probably is coming right down here. Because they don't know the concepts of momentum, because momentum can show you where an institution enter the market. So if you understand momentum, it can give you points of interest. So someone who understands momentum and knows very well that most momentary trading is done by institution trade traders, then he or she will now find an area of interest down here, which will be quite important for this market. And my friends, you may just see um, when this market will get to this structure here, you may just realize that when this market get to this structure, the market will just start buying from there. Many people will not even know that the market had to buy from there. It's simply that because they don't know and because they have not learned these things you are learning this morning. So momentum is very, very vital. It's one of the key things that you should bear in mind because momentum will show you where the banks or big institutions did trade it. So there's a great chance that this market can leave from this top begin to move in yati, yati, small, small, and come and touch here, and, pew, and the market now begin to go up. You'll be like, wow. So wait and see, my dear friends. Because this other point here has been mitigated. But when you look at this uh, momental movement from here, it was not as powerful as this one. So if you want to point out a bank trading uh, area here, you can identify this one, two here, and then three. These are the three places that we can say that this bank traded there, where we can see very clear price action. And from where those momentas are coming from, there are still some others left on field there, where the institutions may go back to field there. Oh, that's, that's what Ronnie is saying this morning, and we should learn that. And look again, my dear friends, Look again here. If you look here very well, you're gonna see that there was a great momentary rejection here at this level. And after that, price rapidly dropped within the next uh, one, two candles. So it means that there was an institutional action there. If you are able to demarcate and pick out this zone of rejection uh, momentum, you will see that market can come back again to that zone and you execute. So, these are the things that is lacking in your trading. When you will add to your trading, you will see that you are gonna be a different being. You'll be a monster when it comes to Forex trading. See, that's it, simple. Market goes back to that uh, momentary rejection area and dropped. You see, simple like ABC. So if you don't know about momentum, just learning about momentum this morning, I hope you have seen the opportunities that momenta brings. And one way to catch those people that always take your money, these big boys, these big institutions that take Forex and take your money, the easiest way to catch them 
is to catch them through momentum. Because what? The amount of money they used to trade with is too big. So they can, can never hide from us because they have huge amount of money. And that's why they cannot hide from us. And since they cannot hide from us, we are going to be eating their leftovers. Their leftovers is what? Means once we have identified that a, an institution traded from this point, it means auto automatically that not all of their others have been filled. And they may come back to that point to fill their others. That's why at this point here, when they sold this market here, not all of the others were filled. And they came back to eat. And this is the time that you eat. You eat only when they came back. And when they came back to fill the remaining others, you then zoom in and you ate. So it means that you may not have really just grabbed this first move because there is no footprint. You are not a magician. You are not a magician. Again, you see the way they executed here, you need to come back and fill the remaining others. This is another key point they executed. They also can come back to fill this other. And this other zone is a virgin zone. It means that they have not come and touched that zone to, to mitigate it. That's why it still remains unexploited, okay? Same thing happened again. You see this momentum shift from here. Market comes back again to the momentum shift to fill the remaining others. Again, this momentum shift from here, market came up to this point, clicked again on that point, and still few some others that were left on few there. And during this coming back, when we have to eat the leftovers, you guys can realize that the price action is very, very powerful. Exactly. Dr. Norma is asking about momentum shift or momentum, momentum with news. Most news also come with momentum, but not all the time. So some of this uh, momentum that you are seeing in the market must not have occurred during the news. Some will occur normally like that. Now the news can amplify these momentums. So because most institutions, they also trade fundamentals. So why we identify most of their footprints is that most big institutions, they also trade a lot with fundamentals. They do a lot with fundamentals too, as they do with technical analysis. They also trade fundamentals very well. So we need to know that too. So there are some periods where the market will have a great momentum without necessarily being news. So if it comes from news or from any other price action manner, then momentum should be taken care of. Now, we are interested in where momentum started. You understand? What we are interested in is where the momentum started. Because even if it was during news and momentum came in, it means that once we have known that this momentum started from here, then price may definitely come back to that point again for us to eat our own small food that is left there. You now understand? So that's why it's important to note. So this is the most important point of interest for GU this week, this point of interest. So after all of this nonsense, you may find price here and then price may rally up from there and you make some money. So although we can also use volume as, as a basis, as volume in Forex is not centralized, it is not a, real, a reliable measure in this strategy. So we will not be looking much of volume. Now, volume, when it comes to the forex exchange market, if you put a volume indicator, you come to understand that you somehow, you find the volume indicator somehow a little bit dif difficult to, to utilize. And again, volume some way could, uh, I don't know, but when we treat volume on its own, I don't know how I can explain this to you, but you come to realize that uh, the volume bars that you are gonna have, like you have a bar like that, volume bars, red, you may have another one which is thicker like that. Then you have another one which is like this. You have another one which is uh, like this, for example. Uh, all of them is always at the bottom. 
and uh, you can have a very big cell volume like that eh, in the midst of an uptrend. But the market doesn't change, even though you have a huge cell volume in the midst of an uptrend, like this rejection here, for example, this rejection that you see here can create a very huge cell volume, a very huge cell indication volume bar that when you put it together to like analyze, it may look confusing. So what I would like to use more at this level is simply the market structure. Like for example, this thick red candle that was dropping here, if you switch it to the 15 minutes, you may discover that it may be have a, a slight 15 minute, uh, if you have a slight 15 minute buy candles from there, like you can have a slight 15 minute buy candles, like after you were having these small, small candles, you will see that you have a big buy 15 minute candle here that may even push you to fool you to think that there's a huge buy volume in the market. But now when you are looking back at the momentum shift, you may be comparing most of these candles occurring here with any of the red candles that are actually coming here. Because when you look at these blue candles here, they are, they, the way that the red, can, the, the red candles, they comes out are quite different. Look at this red candle. Look at these ones. Look at these ones. You can easily spot out that, okay, these blue ones are not equivalent of the red ones. So, the blue candles uh, momentum still in this current market are still more stronger than any buy market momentum that we can see. And this can maintain back your notion of momental move for you to know that, okay, it's not the right time for me to get in. So it's important for now. Even though volume is very important, but I don't really want to mix volume because uh, volume has a lot to do because, okay, let me explain to you in, in another sense. This market here, okay, has volume. This market that is selling here has volume. At least because the market is shifting in a particular direction. Now, when it comes to volume here, you look, look at this top here, will not have any volume. For the fact that this top in a consolidation like this have a very timid volume. And after this timid volume, here we are going to find out that there will be volume in the market because the market actually shifts. But the volume in the market is not, even though there is much volume in the market, but we cannot just use the volume alone to determine how fast was the trade action with that volume. So we need now momentum to come in to tell us how fast was a test action when that volume was there. So we now realize that when there is momentum, there is volume, and there is a fast trading action, which now can distinguish now that this momentum, volume, fast trading action was done by a bank. But now, once there is momentum, there is volume. But there can be volume without momentum. There can be volume without momentum. There can be volume without momentum. But once there is momentum, there is volume. And there is volume, there is fast trading action. So simply working on momentum to be more specific will be a best idea than confusing you with volume all true. So look at the, this, uh, this chart here, how fast, how slow it is, focus on the real structural point here. So um, this is the real structural point. Look, this, uh, the complex, this is a complex pullback. I want you here to focus on the momentums that uh, this market had from here, for example, from selling at this, this momentum that the market took to sell down here. And uh, when you look at this structure, 
and you look at this other movement, you can clearly see that, okay, this was a momental trade down and this was a complex, this was a complex pullback. So momentum can also give you the sense, a sense in knowing uh, the trend direction of the day, intraday trend direction. And momentum can also tell you that, look, you are in a pullback. Momentum can also tell you that, look, in a pro trends because more pro trends like okay we have a market going up like this most of the pro trends here we expect that it should have momentum and the counter trends should be com should be complex pullbacks so the complex pullbacks are going to take some time to really manifest and at the end of the day you can spot out that okay this is a low volume or a low momentum uh, pullback Okay, always look for a fresh zone when checking on momentum. Always look for a fresh zone. Like here for me, when I'm looking at my momentum here, uh, where if you're looking at point of interest, momental setup, this, my point of interest here is pure fresh than this one, than this one. This one here was fresh when um, this mitigation has not occurred. So when already there's mitigation, I will not really like to look again more on it. Fast momentum are called impulsive wave and slow momentum are called corrective wave. And the corrective wave helps in building others. Here, it stated that a week will be a body in a, in a smaller time frame. So once, for example, you see this liquidity week here, if you switch maybe on the one minute, you can just see that it's a candle. And you may not identify what happened here if you're on the one minute. You may just see a one minute candle that sold rapidly or a five minute that sold, a candle that sold rapidly, but the price action may not really be expressed. So that's why you need to use different time frames when you are doing your studies when it comes to this. So they are saying that some people are sleeping. You know? People should get up. People should get up. You don't have to sleep. These things, I choose this time of the, of the day because these things that we are teaching like that, they are very, uh, they are very crucial. If not, you can trade forex for the next 10 years. You don't make money. I'm telling you the truth. If you are not smart, if you all of these things we are saying here, you don't know, you can trade forex for the next two years. You don't make a dime. So better just sacrifice your small sleep for today and you will see a huge change in your trade, in your way of trading. So there is a lot. I just want to go small, small, so that we can understand uh, as we are putting for. So I will see some people are sleeping. I will ask them to get up and I'll give a five minute breaks, break, sorry. I'll give people a five minute break so that you get up, feel stronger and continue. So please, you have a five minute break to get up. Five minutes, five minutes for us to continue.
It's Sunday. Today is the day that Papa will have to go to church. Some people have to sow seed to Papa so that they can receive grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. If you want to buy a new car this year, do a car seat sewing. How can you do it? Look at the money that you think, an amount of money that you think that if you put in Papa's momo, let me put in the soul seat number. When I always talk about soul seat, some of you will take it for granted and you will not sow the seed. <laughs> uh, not knowing that if you sow the seed, if you do that seed sowing, many things, many doors will open to you. I don't know how many people here do salaka. I don't know how many people do salaka here. If you have ever done salaka, you understand what, if you like go to Ngambi man, Ngambi man will tell you that you can do salaka. Even the Muslim, they do salaka. Salaka, during Christmas Eve, a rich man will buy things, go and do salaka. Hmm? in their village house, they will give there you go and do salaka. The same way I'm saying that do salaka, so see do salaka with papa. The same way. If you want open doors, if you want open doors in a particular area, do salaka. What I'm telling you is the truth. It does open doors. That's why some people keep being donors. They donate, they donate, they donate, they donate, they donate. And the more they donate, more money comes in. And the more you give, the more you receive. So guys, if you want, let me tell you, your level in life at the moment can be envied by many people. Now, that means there are many people who just want to be at your level where you are in life. today, And that means their prayer point is your current state. And at this, your current state, there is somebody somewhere just praying to have a carton of sugar and he will be so much satisfied. And if you can help as a fulfillment, that means you can help someone to fulfill right, who he wants to become, then you can become double of what you are. Automatically means that no matter how small what you do the salaka with, there can be somebody on the street not just having slippers. And all he wants is the day I'll have a good slippers to wear, I'll be very satisfied. He feel complex and accomplished. Once you just do that small thing to that person, which is very minimal, I will not change you in any way. God, that person will feel fulfilled. And because you yourself, you want to be bigger than what you are, what you do unto others, what you do unto them, you do unto me. What you do unto my burdens, you are doing to God. So what you are doing to one another is definitely what you're also doing to God. So, and you have a desire as you are praying, you want to buy a car this year. You have been praying to God. And you have just satisfied somebody and definitely is God that you have satisfied by doing what? By doing that small contribution to that person that have completely bring, bring, brought happiness to that person. And at the same time, you have made people happy and you are praying and God will listen to you and also make you happy. Do unto others what you want, what you want them to do unto you. They are the burdens of God. So definitely you are doing those things to God. So you want to be happy. You've made God happy. And definitely God will make you happy. That is the power of Salaka. It now boils down to the fact that today, people want to make $100 next week. But you have not so seed in the Forex Church of All Nation. Papa is saying so seed, you are laughing. Papa is saying so seed, you are laughing. You are laughing, you are laughing. Okay, no problem. Those who want to be Dr. Nome, they want to make a million dollars. You don't want to sow seed. Ibrahim, you made a lot of money last week. Maybe it's because of the seed you sowed the other time. And from every indication that your seed has expired. So if you want more of the heat this week, 
then do something small. Just add something to something. Just make somebody happy. Maybe you are even know you are you are just making my momo happy, and my momo will make me happy. And if my momo make me happy, God will make you happy because you are doing unto God. Okay, great people. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, now I want to tell you, we are coming close to what is interesting. So let's push forward again. So listen very well. In the chat above, you can see a strong impulsive movement down. So this is the chat, right? The strong impulsive movement that is going down. So in the chat above, you can see a strong impulsive movement down and uh, followed by a slow corrective weak momentum up. This, simply, this is simply a complex pullback. So if you look at it, the, the momentum to the upside is very slow and it's very complex. So this is a complex pullback and there was a strong impulsive movement in the direction of the trend. If you look at that again, also take note of the time it takes. So once you want to know that this is a pullback or not, you take note of the time that that, at that particular movement took, you get it? So if it takes two days for a strong bearish move and it takes seven days for the retracement, you know it's a correction, complex pullback as the market doesn't have bullish momentum. So one of the easiest way to, to talk about this is a time in which most of the most of the impulses like most of the momentums always behave like for example if you look here like let's just as assume all of this momentum shift to the downside you guys are going to see that it took us about six hours for this shift with momentum to get down here now when, when these guys were doing a manipulation to get enough others in here, you can see that they did again from this momentum shift from here to this tip. They took two hours only. And now, when now they wanted to do a corrective shift, how long did it took? How long did, it, did this go? You see, they took 18 hours. 18 hours, which did not even cover half of this momentum, which just was just half, like, we was just about half of the momentum shift. So this small momentum that, that occurred here took just two hours, so two hours, and you make the money. But because you are trading against the trend, you spend about 18 hours, no money is coming to you, nothing. So look again at this level here. Look this other point here. You see that the market took from this momentum shift to this point, the market took 45 minutes to do that rapid movement from that bottom to that top. Now, this pullback, which was not a complete movement of the first movement, took this market from this tip to here, it took an hour. So the impulsive movements are always greater. Like they have a faster movement than the corrective waves. So my key note is that you should be able to identify a corrective wave from an impulse because we are going to make use of it in, in the slide ahead. I'm just trying to build a foundation of some of smart money concept. We have not gotten there yet. I'm just building your foundation for you to understand small, small things before we now go to the main course. So if you have attended the first class and the second class, and you think that you have learned what I want to think, teach that you lie. What I want to teach is not, we have not even gotten there yet. We'll get there and you'll see. You'll see for yourself and know that this was just a, found, a foundation to put you at the right state to learn what you have to learn. So, 
where I was somewhere about time, the, the number of days that it takes. Also, another way to do is to calculate the number of pips. So another example, if it is a bullish move, when if a bullish move went up to, two, let me say 100 pips in two candles, but the bearish pullback went to, uh, went to 80 pips in 12 candle, it is just giving you a sign that there is a very weak bearish sentiment and most likely the bullish price action will continue. Very simple, very, very simple. So this is what you people need to understand my friends. So you come here, for example, this short movement took 45 minutes, but the pullback is taking one hour. It's not even able to cover the movement that is occurred. It's just a sentiment that the market will continue buying, full stop. Secondly, we're talking about the number of pips. If you take the number of pips here, that is huge bullish movement occur. It did how many pips autonomy? 48 pips, right? Now, in return, in return from this tip to this bottom, it took 65 pips. And how many candles? The, the 80, 84 pips took us how many candles? If we, if, we, if we want to just take the red candles and the blue candles, it will be better off even. So let's just go with the red candles here. So we can say it fully started here at this point. It took us um, one, two, three, four candles to give us 47 pips and three candles to give you 84 pips, my brothers. It's simple for you to understand that this pullback has taken more candles, but lesser number of pips. Whereas the impulsive movement took what? Less candle with a greater number of pips. It simply means that this market will continue to buy. Sentiment, sentiment, bullish really sentiment. How can you build that this market can continue buying and this market can continue selling? That is a topic of now. That's what I'm trying to talk about. I'm saying that now. At the end of this class, my friends, you should be able to identify if a market can continue buying or not, if the market can continue selling or not. After a pullback, using what? Either you use a number of candles, distance covered by a number of candles, or you use the time that a particular movement was used to, a distance was used to cover, or you use the number of pips that a certain number of candle covered. So these are just normal comparison, which I tell you 80% of those trading Forex don't even pay attention to these elements, which are key to your Forex success. It's very important, my friends. Now, it is, it is given, it, it, it is given, you, it's giving you a sign that there is a very weak, very sentiment and most likely the bullish price action will continue. Now, the real structural point are still valid. And until the real structural point are broken, the structure still remains. So for example, this is a higher low, and this is a lower low. So these are the real structural points. So if this higher low, or this lower height, sorry, is not broken, if it's not breach, then this market is still in a downtrend. Full stop, because we are talking, we are talking about a case of a downtrend. So the real structural points need to be broken for a state of a market to change. So it's quite important. So here we have a very pure impulsive movement with momentum and a complex pullback that is a retracement, but our market direction is still in the downside. Beautiful. So I've passed this slide. So uh, here we're going to be talking about here we are going to be talking about institutional trading. Three ways to identify where an institution got into the market. My friends, this is now the core 
of what we are going to be doing. We are going to identify, we will learn how to identify where an institution enter the market. One of the way will be through the SHC, which is a stop on scandal, uh, other block, fake out, large volume range, call, uh, which you can use different names to call them. So buy before you sell, sell before you buy, in balance. So our strategy will use three main methods. These methods to identify when an institution will come into the market. So I will teach you specifically when to know that is an institution I have traded. I'm going to use a stop hunt candle, an OB, fake out, large volume range. I'm going to use buy to sell candle, sell to buy candles, and I'm going to use imbalance. When I will teach you using these three components, then you'll be able to beat your chest and say that I can identify where the big boys traded and I'm going to eat the remaining food that they leave on the table, full stop. Now, the smart money concept will be focused around this. So when we are going to talk about smart money concept, it will be focused around this. And the smart money concept will be simple. What happens when your stop loss is seated? Who is controlling the market up and down trends? Why was your stop loss hit just before you got, it goes in your favor? So why was your stop loss hit before, just before the market goes in your favor? Now, we're gonna look about sinking liquidity and you will understand that the Forex market is just a field of war between the buyers and the sellers. So at the end of the day, guys, we have had the foundation that is required for you to learn smart money concepts. And so the remaining part of our lectures will focus on these two key things, which will build you to an extremely excellent trader. I mean, after this course, I believe that you will have a great shift in the community way of trading. People mindset is going to change and people are going to do excellent trade and i believe that tomorrow class will go up deep into these structures into this course starting from this point and uh, i pray that if things go well if we don't finish tomorrow we'll finish on tuesday so that by the end of this week we begin to see results in the community so great people today is sunday papa need to go to church and uh, i need to go and prepare and so have a beautiful and excellent Sunday. God bless you all.